It's pretty well known that the European Bronze Age saw a lot of travel and exchange taking place. Over the years, archaeologists have found evidence for pretty sophisticated trade networks. However, until recently, little was known about how southern Italy fitted into this world. Long before Pompeii, the area around Mount Vesuvius and the Gulf of Naples was home to copper and Bronze Age populations whose relationship with the outside world has not been well studied. Now the analysis of exotic metals found in two prehistoric cemeteries near Mount Vesuvius, one dating to before a notable eruption and one dating to both before and after it, has revealed some interesting geographic connections. The plain close to the Gulf of Naples was very fertile during the Copper and Bronze Ages due to its volcanic soils, which were mostly made up of ash from Mount Vesuvius and the Phlegrian Fields Complex. Evidence for human habitation dates from 3700 BCE in the Copper Age, and the area was populated right through the Bronze Age. Easy access to the Tyrrhenian Sea was likely another reason why people were attracted to the Campania Plain. 2,000 years before the famous eruption that destroyed Pompeii, Herculaneum and other Roman settlements in the region, Mount Vesuvius had an even more powerful eruption. It ranked at number 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index and created the formation called the Avellino Pumices. Although catastrophic for the people that lived there, causing a mass abandonment of settlements, it did mean that their sites were well preserved by the ash. For example, excavations of the Nola Croce del Papa Bronze Age village discovered in 2001 revealed three intact huts, pottery and the footprints of people and animals. The new paper published in the journal Scientific Reports analyzes two Bronze Age cemeteries near Acera, which is 20 kilometers northeast of Naples. One dates to before the Avellino eruption and one to both before and after, and both cemeteries fall within the Belbica period. At that time, steppe ancestry expanded across Europe and the Mediterranean, which may have also brought about the diffusion of the Proto-Indo-European language. Bronze metallurgy, social hierarchies and complex political systems also emerged in Europe during the early Bronze Age. Since this video is about exotic metals, also check out the one I made about the lucrative tin trade that took place between Cornwall and the Mediterranean 4,000 years ago. One of the cemeteries near Achera is named AC3620 and dates to between 2400 and 2000 BCE. Its burial pits are cut into a volcanic layer that had been formed by the Agnano Monte Spina eruption around 2000 years before the site was in use. The second cemetery is named AC3970 and was in use between 2100 and 1800 BCE, so before and after the Avellino eruption. Both burial contexts were chosen for the study because of their metal grave goods, which have alloctonous typologies. This means the styles, if not the actual artifacts themselves, came from outside the area. 41 tombs were analysed in total. Radiocarbon dates couldn't be obtained from the human remains since skeletal collagen wasn't well preserved. This is probably because of the volcanic soils they were buried in. However, chronologies were determined based on their position within volcanic layers and the typologies of the grave goods. Both cemeteries contained single flat inhumations, bell beaker style pottery, bronze weapons and bronze ornaments. The research team carried out isotope analyses and combined this with archaeological data to gain insights into the movement of people, copper and artefact styles in southern Italy during the Bronze Age. Geochemical and isotope analyses were carried out on daggers and pins since they were in a good state of preservation and bioanthropological and biogeochemical analyses were carried out on 34 individuals. All of the metal objects were found to be made of tin copper alloys, with none being made purely of copper or arsenical copper. The percentages within these alloys varied. Here you can see images and drawings of the daggers and pins recovered from the older cemetery. The chemical composition of the samples from both cemeteries were mapped out. In order to determine the provenance of the copper, lead isotope ratios were measured and compared with a comprehensive database of copper mineral deposits. 
As I've said in many previous videos, copper sources are widespread, tin deposits are not. In this study, only the provenance of copper was analyzed. Most objects displayed isotopic signatures that overlapped with deposits from southern Tuscany. The provenance of the ore used in four daggers, two from each cemetery, was difficult to determine with any certainty. Nothing in the database was a match, but it does open up the possibility that sources were mixed or that recycling had taken place. A dagger from the older cemetery and a rivet and a pin from the later cemetery were found to be made of copper originating in the Balkans. The lead isotope signatures of a roll-headed pin and pin stem from 620 and a dagger from 970 showed that they were all made from copper sourced in southwestern Sardinia. A useful way of determining human mobility in prehistory is by carrying out a strontium isotope analysis of a tooth. As I said earlier, the poor state of the remains meant that radiocarbon testing was not possible, but fortunately, isotope analysis was able to be carried out on some individuals. In the oldest cemetery, only 32 skeletal remains were preserved out of a total of 127 graves. Mostly just imprints in the ground were what was left. In the later cemetery, 37 out of 53 were preserved. The majority of the individuals fell within the local environmental baseline range. This had been determined by collecting animal, soil and water samples from within a 20 kilometer radius of the site. One individual from 620 and four individuals from 970 were identified as non-indigenous and these four from the later cemetery were all from the pre-eruptive phase. However, the isotope analyses of these non-indigenous individuals were still compatible with the wider regional baseline, meaning that their origins were not from that far away. This is quite the contrast compared with the artifacts whose typologies are to be found in continental Europe and to a limited extent in northern Italy. One of the most interesting types of artifact is the disc-headed pin. These grave goods are associated with female burials amongst several cultural groups in southeastern France, the Valais in Switzerland and the upper middle Danube amongst other continental European areas. A well-established chronology of these pins matches those found in the earlier cemetery. The early Bronze Age may have seen a movement of Belbica people through the Transalpine areas, through the Adiga Valley, through Tuscany and all the way down to southern Italy. And there they brought their unique pottery style and disc-headed pins, but more on that in a moment. The female graves were oriented northwest and the male graves to the southeast. This is the first time that such sex differentiation appeared in burial customs in the area. As well as the disc-headed pins, other ornaments such as spirals, hair rings and necklaces were found in female graves, something that had not appeared in that region before. The copper was likely sourced from Tuscany and other more distant regions such as Sardinia and the Balkans, suggesting maritime exchange networks. Although the provenance of the tin used in the artifacts isn't known, since the main sources are southwestern England, Brittany, northwestern and central Iberia, central Europe and Asia, it's likely that the people of Echera interacted with a wide network for exchange and trade. The authors of the paper suggest that the Campania Plain could have been a hub where raw materials such as copper and tin were imported to be made into bronze artifacts, the styles of which had traveled southwards from the transalpine region. However, there's little evidence for metal workshops in the area. Ingots, scrap metal and unfinished products are much more common in northern Italy. So it's more likely that the actual artifacts rather than simply the styles traveled south. Evidence for the remodeling of some of the artifacts also suggests this may have been because of a lack of metal workshops or technological limitations in Campania. In this scenario, Tuscany was a hub directing the flow of artifacts from the north to the south, where local groups adopted them as status symbols. These local groups also adopted new funerary practices, slowly changing their cultural identity and displaying their material wealth. So here we're seeing a movement from north to south of ideas and artifacts rather than the people themselves. I've talked a lot on this channel about Bronze Age trade networks because every year there are new papers published which outline evidence for long distance exchange at that time. What interests me is just how that was made possible, especially in areas that didn't have a writing system yet. Just how was trade and exchange organized? Who was responsible for it? And what did exotic materials and artifacts really mean to a local community? 
Were transalpine style daggers an indicator of wealth in southern Italy or were they preferred for more practical reasons? And why did they adopt foreign funerary customs? I also wonder how much was transported over land and how much by water. Without modern maps, how did they know where they were going? Did they ever get lost on a 500 kilometer journey to a metallurgy workshop? And in this scenario, did the people in southern Italy understand the wider trade networks that they were actually, in principle, a part of? Did people understand their place within this interconnected Bronze Age world? That's it. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Let me know what you think about Bronze Age trade in the comments and I'll see you next time.